Hey guys, Gemma, ASD, rocks. You could not make this up. I could not have made this up. So today, I went with the boys to Gumbaya World. I've done a bunch of videos, like, you know, while we were there and beforehand, and oh my God, we're going to Gumbaya World, but this is something I just have to put out, like, now. So, we got there at like, I don't know, 10, 30-ish, something like that. And of course, because with Bo and his autism, I always get a cabana. I have to, whether it's, so I've never been to Gumbaya World before, by the way. It is amazing, I think, because <laughs> I didn't really get to see it, but I'll explain that in a second. So we arrived there. I always get a cabana so that Bo has, you know, if he gets overstimulated, if there's, you know, any issues, he can go into the cabana. He's got his, um, his food, his, you know, a, a safe space. No one can come in. It's, it's, uh, we, I used to take the boys when they were younger to Adventure Park, but that's in Geelong and it is a huge drive, like a two and a half hour drive. Gumbaya World, from my side, from where I am, it was like, it didn't even feel like an hour. It was, I think it was like an hour and 20 minutes. It was just like straight there. So... Finn says he wants to do all the um, he wants to do all the rides without. Oh, my, I'm still wearing the thing. He wants to do all the rides that aren't water first, and then he wants to do all the water rides. So, and I'm and 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 it turns out something I didn't know. Finn is this insane adrenaline junkie. Bo's not. He used to be, but he used to be because he had absolutely no concept of fear, mortality, environment, those sorts of things. But now that he's got that concept, he's, he's way, way more reserved. So Finn goes on a couple of rides, some of which I downright refuse to go on. Um, and as we're coming back, it's like we've, we've only been on two or three rides, but we booked in for this special sort of, um, it, it costs extra. It's not a part of your general pass. Like you go in and there's one or two or three, like there's a special animal photo or close up or whatever that you can pay for. No, not interested. Um, but there was a surfing thing. It's like, um, you know, they rush the water and you can either do the, um, we call it, uh, uh, look here yeah. boogie board you can boogie board we call it tin lids i don't know why um so as we're walking back from one of the rides we walk past this thing we've booked one session and i just wanted to find out because it doesn't come on this how does it work how do we get the session? How do we retrieve it? How does it all happen? And so I'm standing with Finn and we're watching this surfing thing and I'm waiting for the guy who, the, the lifeguard, um, you know, who's getting the kids on and helping them in to ask him, you know, how do we redeem our voucher or whatever it happens to be. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this girl and she's a large girl 
she's uh, 16 years old, sort of not too tall, but 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 uh, stocky, very, very strong, very big. And I look over and instantly I'm like, that girl has autism. And I'm not talking like, you know, oh, we thought something was wrong. I'm saying this girl's got autism, right? And she's standing there with her brother and another person. And I'm waiting for this lifeguard to, you know, be free. And all of a sudden, this girl starts kicking off. And I didn't know if she was with her mother or if she was with someone else. I didn't know the situation. But the person she was with was saying no. And she, the girl, was getting very upset, very aggravated. And she started sort of thrusting, sort of charging at this woman who was not a dissimilar height and build, but you, I could see that this was escalating significantly. And I was looking directly at the person that she was with as it was sort of small and starting and I was sort of it's really really hard when you see that and you know what's happening and you want to let a person know that you know what's happening you're not looking at them because you're judging you're not looking at them because you know they're doing the wrong thing you're looking at them almost in a way that's saying I know what you're going through you know can I help kind of thing Anyway, so the woman she was with is saying no and this girl starts charging at her and she says no again, which upsets the girl again. So the girl become, starts becoming violent and as she goes to push this woman in the face, the, the, the woman says, no. Okay, now let's break it down. At this point, I'm watching and I'm thinking, you like change your language because it's not working. It's, it's escalating. Anyway, I'm gonna cut a long story short, which you know I never do. After I have witnessed this girl, this 16-year-old girl, it turns out that she was with a carer. When we turned up, I looked around and I noticed that there was a huge number of, I'm just going to say special needs because I don't know, I assume that the majority were autistic, but there was definitely intellectual disability as well within this girl. There was so much more going on than, than um, you know, just a, a straight up case of autism. That's this one person. I actually um, stopped one of the people and asked them, because we were in a line at one stage and I said, hey, you know, who are you? What do you do? It's really interesting because they were all sort of wearing blue shirts. Uh, but this but this one woman wasn't. So I had no idea that she was actually a part of this group. After I witness this 16-year-old autistic girl, girl with autism, have the carer in a headlock and then at one point try and push this carer's head from the back of the head into a wall, right? 
I approach not too closely and I indicate to the carer, who I did not know was her carer, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit with the brother, right? So the brother's 14. He wants to go on the surfing ride. He's got autism, like, <laughs> you know, when you know, you know. Um, there are situations where you have one child that does and one child that doesn't, just like my situation. However, I, sat, I sort of crouched down next to the boy and said, you know, hi, my name's Gemma. And he told me his name, which immediately he spelled. I then said my name again, which immediately I spelled. And I knew, bang, exactly where we were at. So I knew what I was dealing with with him. I indicated to the carer and said, I've got him. Like, you deal with it. I've got, I've got the brother. The carer then got on. Uh, uh, the girl, the, she was, like... It was, she was, it's so hard to explain. It, I'm not, you know, the physical violence, the physical strength, the, 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 the dissatisfaction, the anger that she was experiencing, you know, do I want to say it's a meltdown or do I want to say it's a chemical reaction? You know, it's a combination of the both. Girl goes storming off. Kara's on the phone. I still didn't know it was Kara. I'm talking to the younger brother. That's how I find out. It's not the mother. It's a Kara. All of a sudden, so Kara gets off the phone. I'm concentrating on the brother. I want to look, I want to make sure that he's not left completely alone um, without any supervision. He's 14. Finn's standing there with me watching the surfing. I'm helping. I, I say to Finn, mate, if you want to just go back to the cabana, get changed, go enjoy. Finn's oh God, that kid is amazing. Finn has been exposed enough to know that, you know what, yep, I'm going to go to the cabana, I'm going to do my own thing. Mum is looking after someone who needs looking after. It's not about they're more important or I'm not important or anything like that. It's like there's a situation. And he witnessed the whole thing as well. You know, and this was a significant, violent outburst. Um, so then all of a sudden, so I'm sitting with the boy and all of a sudden, I don't know, like seven staff all, all like flock into this one place that we're at. And I can see that they're all like looking around and, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to make things a hundred times worse. Like, can you imagine how this girl's going to be if seven people like all just on her? So I stand up and I'm like, whoa, 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 guys, there's information you need to know here. This girl is severely autistic. You do not want to be like swarming on her. This is not the way to handle things. This is the brother, you know. So then this, uh, I, who I can only assume was like the supervisor because it was like three or four lifeguards and, you know, two uniform, two or three uniform people. Um, and, you know, I, he's like, you know, tell me what happened, what's the situation? I said, listen... We're dealing with a severely autistic, violent, prone to violence. Prone to violence. Very important, I think, the difference between a violent person and prone to violence. Um, just to make that distinction. 
And I said, the worst thing you guys can do is swarm this situation. You need like a one person, very calm, all that sort of stuff. And he's like, you know, can you can you give us a hand? Would you be able to identify them? I'm like, quite easily. It was this far away from my face. I said, but this is the brother. And I said, I'm not leaving him unless, you know, someone has to look after him. He's got autism too. It's not to the same degree. He does and I've spoken to him and I've sussed out, you know, <laughs> you know, who he is, how old they are who the person is, where's mum, you know, what's going on, what's happening. Uh, and so I've de debriefed them and I said, but, you know, some if I'm going to leave and identify and help you find this person, someone needs to stay with this kid because you don't just leave a kid like that. Uh, like, well, you just don't leave any kid sitting there. So they're like, no, 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 we'll totally take her. That's fine. So, you know, they they call one lifeguard over and they're like, you sit here with him. And so I did the introductions and I said to him, uh, I think his name was Mike, something like that. And I said, Mike, you know, this is, what's his name? And I said, Mike, spell your name for him. And he spelled his name and the kid introduced himself and spelled his name, right? So... Straight away, they're doing okay. Everything's going okay. Then I go in the direction where this girl has gone and I didn't see the carer or where she went. I assume she went after him. Yes, honey? Yeah. I'm just talking about what happened today. But you do your thing, babe. So I'm walking around like the wave pool. There's a wave pool. And, and the, the information from over the radios and all this sort of stuff is uh, that they're in the wave pool. There's like, I don't know, a hundred people in the wave pool maybe more I'm and I'm you know I'm looking and I'm trying to find this person in the wave pool I'm like I can't I can't see them I can't see them he's like and you know he's on the radio and he says um no we've got you know they they say they've got eyes on them they're in the in the in the you know, they believe they're in the pool, but we need you to identify them. I said, look, unless I get up where you guys are, because they're all up on a on a platform and they can see over everyone, I, I, I'm standing at the edge trying to find it. They're like, no, 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 go, 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 go have a look. So I get up on the platform thing and I see where they are and I'm like, yep, 100%, that's them. And I said, I'll go and chat with the carer. And he's like, no, no, we want to separate them. Now, <sighs> this is probably policy and procedure. And I have to say, if I could suggest anything, these guys, they have not been trained. Now, we're to, I don't know how often uh, massive groups of special needs kids go to these places, but from what I saw today, it can't be a one-off, and it's just the sheer numbers. There needs to be training, behaviour management, autism. But like, there was, that you know... For for the the lack of training that they had, the guy that was with me is Adam. He he was phenomenal, phenomenal. I think he was following policy and procedure for altercations. Now, 
An altercation usually happens often between strangers. It doesn't. It's it's not a usual situation where. And you know, if that happens, you want to separate them. Separating a carer from an autistic child who's had a meltdown, and I'm saying child 16. It does. You know, I'm not. I'm being generic, but. <sighs> Okay, all right, you want to separate them? No worries, that's your policy and procedure, I assume. I didn't ask, I simply did. I said, all right, I'll deal with it. I'm still dressed, I'm fully dressed. I haven't got my bathers yet. I walk into the pool. Um, I indicate to the carer and say, I've got this, the brother's over there, you go there, I'll deal with the girl. So I'm in the water and I don't know this girl and she does not know me and I do not know her triggers, I don't know her level, I don't know her communications, I, don't, I know nothing about this person. So I'm trying to work it all out. So I'm in the water and it's a wave pool, right? <laughs> <laughs> up or down. I know her name. So I'm calling out her name and I'm calling out her name. And I'm telling her my name. And I'm saying that, you know, we're friends. We're friends. You know, um, and that I know her brother and that her brother's okay. And she's, so she's, she's in a happy place. She's in the water and she's happy, but she's still coming down. She's still heightened, right? That adrenaline, that dope, like all of that, the endorphins, everything, it's all, it's all still coming down, it's still quite high. You can see she's still very on the edge. It took me, it took me probably about, I don't know, maybe seven minutes. It, it look, I, I know it sounds like nothing, but it, it feel it, it felt like a long time to establish a connection with her. So my first tactic was to say, you know, come, come, you know, come towards me. Now she was extremely echolalic and mirroring. That's so her communication levels were finite they were i can do what i can do beyond that it's echolalia and it's mirroring so i'm going like this you know come come and she's copying come come but she's getting deeper and deeper and deeper into the pool and i'm trying to avoid going further and further into the pool they want her out they don't want another incident not in water and not with so many people around I, once i managed to establish a connection with her i then had to spend time with her so to to convince her to then come with me so that took a fair amount of time that that we probably stayed in the water together because she wasn't just going to come out to me and I you know I used many different tactics I did I'm scared help me hold my hands you know to try and get her to come to me which she wouldn't do. So I went to her. Once I was with her, she would hold my hands. She wanted to dance. She wanted to dance in the water. I spoke to her about what is your favorite, you know, ride. She likes the green ride. Okay, where is the green ride? Can you show me? Can you point to me where the green ride is? And she's, you know, the green ride's there and let's dance in the water. And then... You know, so I want to use that green ride to try. I don't know where the green white ride is. Is that your favourite ride? Let's, can you show me how to get to the green ride? So I'm trying to sort of coax her out with, with her 
the way she wants mm. with 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 her incentives. Mm. Huh. So mm. once mm. we had established that mm. yes, we would go out of the water, then mm. there was mm. the goodbye period. She needed to say goodbye to the water and that and that was an intense and deep deep thing for her she was patting the water she was kissing the water she was blowing kisses she was very very connected to this water and i could not rush that i could not pull her out in fact i actually encouraged it with every step I took, I would say, and we would get closer to the to the shore. I would say, now, now let's let's you know let's dance again because she was just saying she loved to dance. She wanted to dance in the water. Now, now let's let's blow another kiss. Let's say the way. And she was like, you know, she was. It was it was a very very intense connection for her, and she was, you know, in in some parts she was privately speaking to the water and and i heard her say you know you'll always be with me and i said water is always with us we love the water let's let's give it another kiss and she would give it another kiss and i was encouraging that i was really really um working with the saying goodbye to the water because it was really helping her to transition out of it Right, I get her out of the water. Okay, they're separated, they're out of the water. Adam says to me, we need, you know, we need to keep them apart. We need to get her somewhere. And I'm like, well, have you got like a sensory room? Have you got a safe space? Have you got a whatever? Like, you know, I mean, I don't know this place very well. Um, no, that... Of, that was that was quite surprising to me. Uh, so I said, okay, you know what? <sighs> and this was really hard. I said, let's bring her back to my cabana. Knowing that Bo could potentially have a massive issue with this. Someone new, someone different, someone unknown in our cabana um that you know that would really really could distress him but he wasn't in the cabana and right now we were dealing with someone who you know staff who have not received vital training it is not their fault this guy adam he was amazing i mean amazing the way that he followed, in my opinion, from what I saw, the way he followed his works policy and procedure, but also was following my lead, took on the information I was giving him. You know, he was open to and understanding that this was an area that he had not received training he was not familiar with and therefore was happy to take my lead as long as it followed and covered what he needed to do you know for the greater good for the company I mean he's an employee in the end whether you're the manager or whether you're you know this is you're an employee it's your job this is just a day at work and you've got to do what's right for work so I speak to the girl and I use incentives to get her, you know, you know, we've established a friendship. I'm using a huge amount of hand gestures. And, and I haven't used, I haven't used the hand gestures that I was taught since Bo was at Southern Autistic School, right? I mean... You know, it's been it's been many years since I've needed your visual cues. You know, we're finished. We're finished here. Um, you know, those sorts of things. 
we get her into my cabana and you're allowed to bring fruit. I had cherries there and I, I said to her that I had, had, I had cherries. Does she like cherries? Yes, she likes cherries. She sat down, put a towel around her. You know, by this stage, I knew her favourite colour. I knew her name. I knew her age. You know, I knew the majority of things I needed to know. Adam, I mean, when you say supervisor, you've got to, like, this guy was super. He, you know, he really watched, he learned, he adapted, he changed the way, he saw the way that I was communicating with her and the reinforcement, the, the repetition and the reinforcement, the repetition and reinforcement. Gemma, we're friends, right? This is Adam. Adam is your, and I would stop and let her fill in the word. This is stuff, you know, I did with Bo for years and years and years, but at the age of like six, seven, eight, to encourage him to become verbal start a sentence, prompt it, don't finish it, let them finish it. For me, I was in two minds. I was worried about my kids. I was worried about the fact that they would be thinking that other people were more important. I was really stressed out about the fact that, you know, I'd basically ditched them, but there just wasn't anybody else there qualified to deal with this situation. And it happened right in front of me. I mean, seriously, had it been three, five minutes later, had we walked past? I mean, how does this stuff happen? You could not make it up. So I've got her in the cabana. She wants photos. Take a photo of me with the cherry. Take a photo, right? He's saying, what can I get for you guys? If there's food, if there's anything, you know, but all this sort of stuff. I said, look, what we need and what we need to do is we need to create a plan. We, we like he's liaising with now this this carer, she's with a whole company. She's a part of the whole company that's there. There are like 50 other carers there with like a hundred other kids. So we he wants the violent girl and she's she's not a violent girl i did a really basic assessment on her and her understanding of behavioral behavioral responses was not what it should be, not at that age, not for her abilities and levels. She knew the correct responses for some things, but when I spoke to her and I said, you know, when, you know, when I'm sad, I cry. When I'm, I, you know, show me happy, she showed me happy. Show me sad and she showed me sad. Show me angry. Now, that was really interesting because while when she showed me happy, it was a depiction of someone else, like, a, like a, you know, kids as Bo often mimic. Show me sad, and she showed the sad face, which was the mimic. But when I said show me angry, there was emotion there. And, like, it was electric. You could feel it. And I said, when, when I'm happy, I 
And then often there were like, I had to prompt her with the word, the first letter, the second letter, I la, I la. When I'm happy, I sm, I sm. And you know, she would, if she could fill it in, she would. Otherwise, if she couldn't, she would simply repeat. It was just echolalic. I would say, when I'm happy, I, and she would say, when I'm happy, I. Very familiar with this situation, been through it a thousand times. So it gives me a really good understanding of what her capacity is, not only for communication, but also what she's taking in. If she's just repeating it back, she does not know the answer. If she knows the answer, she gives the answer. When I questioned her about, is when I'm angry and I push, or when I'm angry and I do whatever, is that, is that good or is that bad? That's good. Now, I don't know her history. I don't know her family. I don't know her school. I don't know anything but what I saw today. And what I know, what, what I know of autism and what I know of, of what her level is at, there was a time that she would have been able to absorb and understand that physical violence was not okay. Why hasn't that made it in? Why hasn't that made it to it's not okay? Why, ha why is she believing that it is okay to respond and we're talking this is a this is a big girl bigger than me not necessarily height wise but you know i mean she could have snapped me like a twig this is where i really want to press the point about early intervention and the earlier that you get onto things because of the neuroplasticity of a younger brain because of the ability for younger children to adapt and understand that if you can if you can get a handle on the physical violence at a younger age you're not going to have to deal with it when you can't and they're 16 20 30 and on and big and tall and strong and they don't know that physical violence is not okay. This is something, now, she's, she's at a level where she can communicate. She does understand, she can communicate. Just because there are things she doesn't understand doesn't mean that there aren't, that she doesn't understand everything. So I think the biggest thing from today for me was the realization of how important this early intervention is, how important behavioral management is, how important it is to have staff training on this at these kinds of massive venues, especially if you have busloads of of companies, support companies sending their staff and children there. Uh, I explained to Adam the what we needed to do and I asked him for a pen and paper so I could create a checklist uh, that what we needed to do was give her a plan of exactly what she was to expect because they want they want they wanted her calm which she was in fact she was so calm at one point because of the energy of this meltdown because of the energy of what was going on she actually fell asleep in the cabana she was 
outright exhausted. All of that was coming down and she just crashed. So Adam's acting as a liaison, doing a brilliant, brilliant job. And what I'm most impressed about by him, what I'm most impressed about is, you know, when it, it's a little bit like seeing, um, I think it's Jane Goodall and, and with the chimps and the way she sort of, and other people would be quite embarrassed, if you know what I mean, um, to adopt a completely different style of communication that they're not used to doing, that they don't understand, that they haven't been trained in, they've had no exposure or experience to. This guy was phenomenal. He would watch me, he would mimic me, and he... he absolutely understood and was so willing, so capable of taking on this advice, taking on this information and not just taking it on, but actively using it with her. And that was fantastic. It made his life easier, it made her life easier, it made the outcome and the goal easier. You know, it, it was, he He truly was brilliant. And I will write in, I will write in. I mean, I had to fill out an incident report by the end of it. it you know, all in all, this took hours, hours and hours. Finally, we did manage so I kept saying to him, look, I can't present her with, sorry, I'm so tired. It was such a massive day. I kept saying to him, because things kept changing, and of course things kept changing, but I kept saying to him, I cannot present her with a plan unless it's going to happen. You have to understand that she's not flexible where I'm going to say, okay, well, this person's coming to get you. Oh, no, that's changed. This person's coming to get you. If we say this is going to happen, this has to happen. So I'm stalling her. I'm stalling her with things, and I'm showing him... For example, uh, okay, so, oh, my God, perfect example. I say to her, I used her name, and I said, favourite food is. Now, and she said, chips. And I said, oh, because they were saying, you know, what can we get, what can we do? And we're trying to spread the time until we can get the parents or someone or anyone to come and get her and get her brother and, you know, take them home so there's no more altercations. And I said, oh, chips, you know, I like chips. And she said, green chips. Now, for f God's sake, oh, my God, seriously, can you be serious? We've got blue chips. As soon as she said green chips, I knew exactly what she meant. Chicken crisps as others would call them in the packet not hot chips green chips Bo loves blue chips right that's what we call them smith's blue chips now to anyone else it's smith's original for us it's blue chips she says green chips i know exactly what it means they don't have green chips okay what does what else does she like you know so i i'm i'm getting up pictures of food and i'm explaining to adam about pecs this isn't pecs it's pictures you know but it's it's still a basic and it's an understanding and idea so i say to him here's the only problem if we show her a picture of a food, it needs to look like that, right? Like you can't offer something and then bring something that looks completely different. So we find a hot dog. I found a picture of four different hot dogs. They had different sauces on them. They had whatever. 
So she chooses the hot dog that she wants. I show him the picture and I said, it needs to look like this. He said, okay, here's the problem. That's a sausage. We have actual hot dogs. I said, that I don't think that's gonna be a problem, but the sauce is in a squiggly line, right? And he's like, I'm on it. I get it, I'm on it, if this is, right? I mean, this guy was amazing. He brought back the hot dog, the sauce was in a squiggly line. Like you just, you name it, he was so, capable of both managing his staff and yet learning and taking on. Often I find with a lot of staff and a lot of people at work at all places, it doesn't matter where you are, if they're in the upper echelons of management and whatnot, it's all like, I know what I'm doing, I'm really, you know, I've got all this stuff underneath me and I I don't need training and I don't, this, you know, I know what I'm doing. This guy was phenomenal. He was capable of managing his staff, liaising with the, the other, the, you know, the... Um, support the company that was providing the support uh the the kids you know and yet while managing all of that flipping it and at the same time absorbing like a sponge how how to manage and cope in these situations and i mean that that's that's a staff member. That's that's a human being you wanna you wanna keep a hold of. You know, they say good staff is hard to come by. Well, this guy was was truly brilliant. They were extremely, extremely appreciative. In the end, friends of mum came to pick them up. Um I had written a list, I sat down with her, I said, you know because we were in Cabana 32. And, and so I was like, you know, we're in Cabana 32. Um, and I put, and I said, tick. She said, tick. She likes the ticks, loved the ticks. I said, you know, my brother comes, we stay and wait in 32. Tick, this person and this person, you know, are going to come and pick me up. And then we got a tick and then I wrote out the rest of the plan. And the rest of the plan was we go to the locker, we get our things. After we get our things, we can have an ice cream. We eat the ice cream in the car on the way home. So you have three things you still need ticks on. And off they went. Adam went and followed. They went to the locker, they did everything. It all, you know, it was all written down. Nothing was a surprise. Everything was good. I am, I'm honestly, I am so exhausted just from, I look, I mean, I don't know if it's like after it was over, we're talking, it was 3.30 at least. It was 3.30 by the time all this was over, um, place closes at like, well, it closes at six, but you know, they're wrapping things up and they're closing at, at five o'clock. We were, you know, I was running around racing to make up the time with the boys. Cause I felt so bad for, you know, ditching them and Bo had come back and he was like, whoa, what's going on? And, you know, she was chill by that stage, so it was okay, and I was trying to explain to him, this is just another person with autism, but it doesn't really matter whether they've got autism or not. This is just another person. So, and then I still had to fill out the incident report, which I hadn't done yet. Um... So, yeah, it was the, I mean, you couldn't make it up. Like, seriously, you just couldn't make it up that I was there at this time in that spot that this happened. Like, 
How does that happen? How does that happen? Anyway, I don't even know what time it is. The dog's snoring, thank God. Hopefully she won't come into my bedroom too early. I'm donating blood tomorrow. Finn and I are going down to the blood bank at like two o'clock. I'm going up to bed. The kids have eaten. I've made two separate dinners. So we got home. I've made two separate dinners tonight. Running upstairs and downstairs because the bloody oven downstairs doesn't work. Um, boys are, I think, showering or showered and in bed. I had to just let you go. Like, seriously, this was just too bizarre for, like, how? <sighs> Regardless, brownie points, everything worked out. And it all worked out really, really well. I am so incredibly impressed, not only with the carer who did not retaliate in any way. In fact, afterwards was in tears. She, she you know, and I went and I spoke to her and I said, you know, today is not a loss. Today is a win. You did not do anything wrong. I saw the whole thing. You're, I mean, this girl, this wom woman, I don't know how old she is. She'd been put in a headlock and charged at repeatedly. Gone to be hit and slapped. Had her head pushed towards a wall, this girl was trying to slam her head into a wall and she kept she kept her cool she did not retaliate i mean that's not easy when you get that flight fight freeze thing it's all well and good to have training but when there's someone you're a little bit bigger than your height and weight going at you, um, I, I think, you know, afterwards, yes, she was in tears and, and it was all a bit much. But, you know, I went and spoke to her and I said to her, you know, you should be getting an employee of the month thing rather than don't think you should be reprimanded. I don't know what kicked it off. I can't say what kicked it off. I can say what I saw, but I know that she remained verbal. She did not retaliate physically. Not easy to do when you're in a defense situation. Um, poor thing, honestly, just was in tears. It, I mean, she really was. And I, I felt for her. I really did. So, yeah, um, I, I ran around afterwards for about, for the last sort of, I think about a half hour. We got two rides in with Finn. Um, I got two rides in with Finn. But, uh, yeah, I just, what a day. I am trash the amount of energy emotional energy and you know intensity that went into this whole day uh was incredible and it really took me back to a time with Bo when you know I was speaking that way with him you know going through half a sentence leaving off the last word, trying to get him to finish that sentence, to prompt. And it was just, it was quite, quite unbelievable. And yet still completely unbelievable that I was there at that time, at that ride, at that exact time. How does that happen? <laughs> I'm going to bed, guys. Oh, brownie points for everyone.